Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at generating components for PCBs. Uh, so in some of the latest versions of Fusion 360, they've added some new templates for generating uh, parts for your PCBs. So uh, recently I made a uh, Raspberry Pi bonnet and I needed to create a part um, for the GPIO header. So Raspberry Pi has that two by 20 um, GPIO header and I needed to make an SMT version, a surface mounted version of it. So this is a part that was automatically generated in Fusion 360 using um, the, uh, the electronics uh, tools. So real quick, uh, this is the GPIO header that we'll be making. It's a surface mount, of course, and it's for the Raspberry Pi. It's a short um, header, so you got a really nice low profile when you're uh, building Raspberry Pi projects with these. Um, and they're in several of Adafruit's uh, bonnets. Here's another one that I used. This is the Adafruit 1.3 inch TFT bonnet. It's got a couple of uh, buttons, a joystick, a display, and of course that two by 20 surface mounted um, surface mounted header. So let's go ahead and figure out how to build one in Fusion. So it's in the latest version of Fusion. Um, just check the uh, your updates. If you need an update, it should be around here. Um, but we should be good, right? So let's go ahead and click on file up here. And you want to do is click on new electronics library. So let's click on that. And then from here, we want to click on this button called create new package. So this will bring us into a new tab. And now we have our package generator. So there's a lot of new components here, a lot of new templates to play around with. So definitely check those out. They all have their own set of variables and things. Uh, so let me scroll down here and look for the SMT the surface mount receptacle header female straight. So there's a couple different ones here. There's a male version and um, this one here is really nice. So let's go ahead and click on that one. And here are all of the options. So you have the option to do a single or a double row. Ours is a two by 20. So let's stick with double row. Number of columns is going to be 20. And then we have some options if we want to use uh, Eagle CAD's integration to do like pin numbering for our silk screen. You can play around with those if you'd like, I'm gonna leave it by default. And the pad shape, you can also change that too. That's again, for um, making footprints for PCBs themselves. We're making a 3D model, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But uh, all of these uh, labels here have a nice description um, and a visual cue that are all labeled here. So you can just kind of reference that. And our spacing here for this one is 2.5 millimeters, which turns out to be 0 0.1, 0 0.1 inch that's 2.5 millimeters. So I just did a quick conversion there. And now we have uh, a couple of things we want to change, namely uh, label D, which is really the length of our header. Is, uh, it's, it's right now it's set to 12, which is a default value, um, but that won't work. So what we need to do is do a little bit of math. So we'll take our columns, that's 20, and we'll multiply that by our pitch, right? Our, uh, our pin spacing. So uh, that would be 2.54, and that gives us a number of 50.8. So that's what we need to enter. So 50.8 will be our, our uh, length, 50.8, and then let's do that for the minimum and the maximum here. So let's go ahead and uh, 50.8, and that's really it. That's all you need to do. If you just want the 3D model, that's really it. We don't need to play around with any of the, of any of the other um, kind of labels here. Um, the width of it is is fine because we have two um, we have two rows, so we don't have to worry about that. But the length is really the one we wanted to play with. If you wanted to change the height and you want to make it a little bit bigger, um, you could change that as well. Um, but uh, it's set by default here, so you can leave that alone. And there's a, there's some more stuff here in the footprint. If you do want to make a footprint for your PCB silkscreen, that's how you would be able to do that. We don't need to play around with that if you just want the 3D model. So with that, let's go ahead and hit add. Fusion's gonna go ahead and generate that for us. Hopefully we did the right numbers. And there it is. You get our, um, you can always go back and uh, modify it. Um, so if you click on this again, it will just bring that up. If, and then there's an update button, you hit cancel. And if you close this out, you have the timeline here. So if you are capturing your timeline, you can double click on that feature in the timeline and it'll bring up our panel with all the values that were in here and we can update it if we got the length wrong or something. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So it was default by 12. Let's see what happens when we update it. It says error, we can't do it because the it's just not matching. So maybe in future 
updates. Future will, uh, it would be nice if this automatically updated uh, per the columns, but it's just how it is right now. So let's uh, put it back to 5.8. I'll go ahead and copy that value and paste it in. It's a little bit easier. Hit update. And uh, well, we didn't really have to do anything. <laughs> I could have just hit cancel. And here's it. here it is. So here's the structure of it. We have a sketches folder where you have these sketches here and therefore uh, Eagle CAD if you want to do uh, some silkscreen stuff and footprints for the part. I'm not going to be doing that. I just want the 3D model. So I like that there is a model component here. And then from here you have your own sketches and you can modify those if you want, but you don't need to. Here's all the bodies and things. Um, there's some construction uh, planes as well. We don't need to play with those, but just be knowing what the structure of your part is like uh, kind of helps, right? But that's all the things we need. Um, you can change the colors around by opening the appearance panel. The appearance panel can be brought up with the hotkey A on your keyboard, A for Apple. And then you can edit the colors and say, I want a blue. I've never seen this, like a purple header. That'd be really cool, right? Well, we can do that here in Fusion. And you can change the material for the metal and all that stuff. But we don't really need to do that. I'm just showing you that you can customize it even more. Um, from here, um, there's a thing here that says finish. Uh, that's just uh, a part of if you wanted to make this an actual um, piece of electronics design, you can hit finish. Um, but from here, if you just wanted an STL or save it out, you can right click on the, the component. Here it's called model. And you can hit export if you want to bring out and save it locally to your computer. That's probably what folks are going to want to do. So make sure shaped computer is active, and then you can use this button here to select um, a folder in your in your uh, local drive or your Dropbox or wherever else. Down here under fo uh, file type, you can change the file type from Fusion 360 to something like a step file, which is more universal. You can name it, or you can save it in the cloud uh, to one of your component folders if you like that. Um, if you want to make an STL out of it, you would want to hit cancel. Go back into that, right click in the browser, and then hit save as a mesh. Save it as a mesh, you have the option to make it an STL or a 3MF or even an OBJ. So depending on what you want to do, uh, um, you can export it in different file formats as a mesh. And that's really cool. Um, but yeah, uh, so that is pretty much the tip. There are lots of new um, templates and gen uh, yeah, templates for parts. I really like using the, when I need to use it, the QFN one is so uh, useful. There's a TSOP, there's so many different ones and, and Infusion's doing a great job of adding uh, new ones uh, with their updates. So if you didn't know about it, definitely try it out if you're looking for these type of parts. That's gonna do it for this tutorial. Um, don't forget, you can go to Adafruit's CAD parts on GitHub and download all the different parts that we have available. So uh, let us know if you want any, if you have any part requests, you can go down to the issues tab and add your parts. I've been going through there and, um, and adding some new parts. We got a nice slew of them this week. So check those out if you uh, want to make some new projects with these parts. Thanks so much for watching, folks. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.